I reckon this is gonna be the best plug-in deal of 2021. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. My friends at Plugin Boutique have an insane deal going on at the moment. It's the Community Appreciation Bundle from Isotope. Now, all of the products in this bundle would normally cost you $1,342, but now you can get them for the insane price of $49. I know, it's a little bit crazy, isn't it? In fact, I can't really understand why you're still here and you haven't followed the link in the description already, but seeing as you are, let me tell you about my top five plugins or features in this bundle, starting off from number five. Five. So in at number five, I've chosen Nectar Elements. This is a great vocal processing plugin, which gets you up to speed with a great starting point for your vocals very quickly and easily indeed, using something called an assistant, a kind of a wizard, if you like. So I've inserted it into a vocal channel here. Let's just have a quick listen to the vocal we're gonna be applying it to. I took my soul through the darkest hole to Okay, so it's going to start off by asking us a couple of questions in terms of, first of all, the vibe. So do we want a, a vintage or a modern vibe? We've got a choice here for dialogue as well, which is a very different thing. So I'm choosing between vintage and modern, going for modern. Then we have intensity, light, moderate, or aggressive. Now, I've found that this makes a really big difference, so it's worth experimenting with this. I'll leave it on moderate for the moment. Then we just click on the go button and it asks us to play the track, which I'll do now. And it's going to go through and analyze different aspects aspects of this vocal, things like um, determining determining whether it needs to apply pitch correction, um, how it needs to EQ it, how it needs to compress it, how much reverb it wants to apply to the vocal, um, all of those basic things, including de-essing, I should mention as well. So once it's analyzed that, which it's done now, then it gives us our first results. So we'll have a quick listen to see how that sounds. I took my soul through the darkest hole too. So that gives us a great starting point. So what do all these controls now do? So we've got pitch correction adjustment here. It hasn't applied it at all here. I don't think it really needs it, but if you did, you would find that when you put this all the way up, you get that really sort of robotic pitch correction, which most of us don't want to hear, but for some styles of music, they do apply that as an effect. Um, so you may want to use that, but I'm going to leave it all the way down there. Then we've got a clarity control. So what they've done under the hood is they've applied some subtractive EQ. So subtractive EQ is about taking frequencies which you don't think sound that great and then reducing them, okay? So you're subtracting those frequencies. So what this control allows us to then do is apply that in, you know, more or less, um, what's the intensity, I guess, is the word. So um, if we listen to it now, I took my I'll push soul. it up through the darkest hole too so definitely with clarity it just gets a, it stands out a little bit more there then we've got ds so um it hasn't applied it strangely here from in my opinion because i think the first s which is in the word soul i took my soul is pretty prevalent if we push that all the way up now I took my soul. You can hear it suppressed that right away. It hasn't got rid of it. We never want to get rid of our S's. That sounds weird, but it has suppressed it. Uh, then dynamics. Now, I think that this one is it's relating mostly, uh, it's relating to compression. Um, I think this one's best adjusted in the context of listening to the whole song. In fact, most of these are, but especially this one. So, but just so you know, this applies more or less of the compression it's chosen to apply. Then we have tone. Um, again, I think it sounds a lot darker down at the bottom. I took my soul through. And a lot more airy as you push up to the top. And then space, which is really how much reverb we're applying. I took my soul through the darkest hole too. So a really straightforward and simple plugin to use, especially if you're new to recording and mixing. And it just means you don't have to learn, you know, like six different plugins. It's got some basic controls here. But even if you're experienced and you just really want to quickly get a sound for your vocals, maybe just for a, a temporary mix while you're still tracking, this could be really, really handy indeed for that. Four. 
So one of the things that you get in this bundle is Ozone Elements. This is a mastering plugin, but I'm going to be focusing on one specific part of it as my number four pick, and that's the Mastering Assistant. So I've got Ozone applied to my song here. I'm going to go ahead and click Mastering Assistant right at the top here. And just like the last plugin, we've got choices like Intensity, Low, Medium or High. Definitely experiment with those. And then Destination, Streaming or CD in this case. So most of you are going to be going for Streaming, so I'll leave that on Streaming. Streaming. I'll click next and then I'll play my song. Now, unfortunately, one of the most difficult things for me to demonstrate to you in a YouTube video is the results of mastering, since there will be mastering applied to the whole video and then YouTube will do its compression, all that kind of stuff. So, pretty difficult to show you the results, but you can see what's gone on here. I accept the results. Um, and you can see that we've got three different things applied or three different things available to play with, I should say. First of all, the equalizer. So it's applied an EQ curve here to my track, whatever it thinks is best. Of course, I can go ahead and adjust that if I want. We've also got an imager, which isn't switched on here, but it's an option for us. So I'll turn the track up so we can hear the results of the imager. This is really for stereo widening. Um, and I'll turn that on and have a listen. <laughs> As I push it up, much wider, much narrower. So that can be a really effective tool for just making things sound yeah, larger and wider, more spacious. And then the last thing it's got here, probably the most important thing really in simple mastering is that it's optimize the loudness of the track, okay? We'll be talking about that a little bit later, in fact. I won't go into it here into too much detail, but very, very useful indeed um, for getting a quick result in terms of mastering. Now, this would be useful for final mastering possibly, but also if you just really quickly want to get a demo out to someone or have a mix listened to by someone, it's really worth doing at least a little bit of mastering just to give your mix a bit of a chance because people may be listening to it alongside other the tracks and things. So definitely simple mask like this is very useful on those occasions. By the way, are you finding this video useful? If you are, go ahead and hit the like button for me. Do it right away so that you don't forget. And if you do like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you're notified about my other videos. Now, back to this video. Three. So there may be a bit of a theme developing here because in at number three, I've got another assistant. This time it's the track assistant inside the Neutron Elements uh, plugin that we have in this bundle. Now, Neutron Elements has a few different modules in it and we're going to allow the track assistant to apply them dynamically by listening to our track. Now, I've got it inserted on an acoustic guitar track here, but this can be used on many different types of tracks as we'll see. We'll click on track assistant at the top here and you can see we can choose the type of instrument that we're analyzing here here. Um, I've got it set to guitar already, but you can see it could be bass guitar, um, percussion, piano, voice, etc. Or you could put it on auto detect, but I know it's a guitar, so I'll leave it on guitar there. And then we simply choose a style, warm, balanced, or upfront. So I'm going to leave it on warm here. I'll click on next, and then I'll play the guitar part and allow it to analyze it. Now it's just going to do the same thing as the other assistants did. It's going to analyze different aspects of the sound and then apply some modules and settings depending on what it's heard. So I'll Set the settings there. I'll stop the track and we can see that it's added an EQ here and possibly because I chose warm it's got a bit of a bump there towards the bottom of the EQ as you can see and there's a little sort of a notch there in the middle where it's taken something out there that it thinks is a little unpleasant. Um, so a very simple EQ setting there is what it's applied. Then a compressor. Um, I don't think it's applied very much here because the ratio is still on one to one so not much compression happening there. So we we can go we can go ahead and adjust that to our liking either by adjusting things like the threshold and the ratio the attack the release etc there as you normally would with a compressor and then finally it's added an exciter so exciters are sort of a, a way of adding harmonic distortion in a very sort of subtle way very very useful to just sort of bring a track to life sometimes and some simple controls there on the exciter to change the sound so you know this is going to vary enormously depending on what type of instrument you're applying it to but a very quick way of getting a starting point with any of the instruments in your composition. Two. So my number two pick's a little bit difficult to demonstrate because I haven't got bad enough audio to demonstrate it with. Why would I want bad audio? Well, sometimes we end up with bad audio despite our best efforts. 
And time and time again, when that's happened to me, the thing that's rescued me is RX from Isotope. So you get RX elements with this bundle. Now what I've got on the screen here is RX standard because I don't have elements available, but um, it does have a few very, very necessary modules in elements. One of those, which I'll try to demonstrate now, for example, is D-Hum. So I've got this little bit of audio here from a vocal track and it's got an awful earth hum in it. Maybe there was a bad cable not noticed at the time. Who knows? Let's have a listen. Oh, mother, how are you today? Oh, mother, how are you today? Not very pleasant. So I'm just going to apply the D-Hum module from RX here. I've already set up some settings off camera so you guys didn't have to watch me boringly adjust this until I got it in the sort of sweet spot. But essentially uh, involves selecting the kind of frequency that I was after and then um, sort of adding these harmonics here so that it could uh, get rid of some of the harmonics and trying not to interfere with the main vocal too much. So what I had before was this. Oh, mother, how are you today? And what I get is this. Oh, mother, how are you today? Now, you may not hear that if you haven't got some headphones on or if you're not listening through monitors because that little hum is outside the range of most smartphone speakers. But really, really useful tools. Um, you also get D-click, I believe, in Elements and also vocal D-noise, which is just going to get you out of trouble sometimes and really save your day. It's just going to take you a few minutes to clean things up. So very much... A very handy thing to have in there, and that's why I have it at number two. So before we move on to my number one pick, I just want to make some honorable mentions. These are products which couldn't make it into the top five because, well, there's only five spaces in the top five, and there's 11, count them, 11 products all in all in this bundle. So we've got things like Trash 2. This is a distortion plugin. Can be very handy indeed. We also have Stutter Edit 2. Now, I haven't used this one, but um, this is creating those sort of stutter effects in your audio. Then we have Iris 2, which is a sample-based synth synthesizer and then we have three reverbs from exponential audio so 11 products all in all i'm going to call this i reckon this is going to be the best plug-in deal of 2021 and we're not even there yet we've not even got halfway through we're nowhere near the black friday sales i still think this is going to be the best deal of 2021 come back at the end of 2021 and tell me i'm wrong if you wish but before you follow that link in the description down below Let's take a look at the number one pick. One. Do you remember the wars? I do, yes, I'm that old. Not those wars, I'm talking about the loudness wars. The loudness wars refers to a trend in audio production where we try to make songs sound louder and louder, with the idea being that things that are louder automatically sound a little bit more appealing to human beings. And that may be true, but of course, if you didn't join that trend, then your songs in comparison to everyone else sounded a bit weedy and weak, so you therefore had to, and that meant there was a general trend towards less dynamic range in music so less difference between the quiet parts and the loud parts making it sound a little less expressive in mine and other people's opinion i talk about it in the past because it's pretty much over now it all changed when streaming came along and most of us release our music to streaming services the streaming services started to require certain specifications in terms of loudness and if you don't meet those specifications there's no advantage to you because they'll just squash your track down until it does meet the specifications. So you're going to need a tool to make sure that you do meet those specifications. And that's my number one pick. I've chosen the Maximizer module from within Ozone Elements. If you use no other part of Ozone Elements, I think you should be using this for every single release. And it's useful even if you're only releasing a demo for other people to listen to. So how does it work? How do you meet those specifications? Really easy. First of all, let's look at the old manual way that we would have chosen so um, in the old days you would just push and push this threshold control down here to make your song sound louder and louder it wouldn't go over um, zero db so it wouldn't be peaking and clipping but it would sound louder because the average level of the track has gone up but you would be squashing the dynamic range and potentially and in a lot of cases including some of my efforts make the track sound rather awful don't need to worry about that anymore all you need to do is set a couple of settings here first of all the true peak for something like Spotify is minus one dB and for most of the streaming services as well. And then the actual uh, threshold for the 
average volume. That's measured in LUFS, L-U-F-S. We just need to click this button here, learn threshold. It's on minus 14, which is what most of the services require. And then all I have to do is play my track, which I'll do now. Now I tend to play the song all the way through from beginning to end, so it can really analyze it fully and set that threshold, which you can see now it's adjusting automatically to exactly the correct spot so that we meet those specifications. Now, um, if it's a song which is pretty much the same all the way through, if there's not much dynamic range anyway, then you could just set this and then just maybe play half a song or something. But yeah, I'll play the whole song. I'll go away, have a cup of coffee, come back and it's done. I don't need to second guess it. I've used, I've used other tools to measure the output from this and it gets it bang on every time for me. Minus 14 LUFS, it doesn't go over the peak, all that good stuff. So the reason this is number one is not because it's a particularly exciting plugin, it's because you need it and you can use it for every single song that you produce. Somebody said in my comments section the other day that if Gordon Ramsay says you should buy it, you should buy it. Cheeky. But I honestly think that you should buy this if you don't already own these products. Just follow the link in the description down below to do that. Also, let me know in the comments down below what are your top five features of this bundle. Also, let me know if you do go ahead and buy it and we can celebrate together in the comments. Yay! Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video.